listening to that J. Hello, my great stars. Welcome to your qualitative reasoning class with Mr. Ehige. In this class, we are going to be looking at exercise 17. Get your books as we are going to be looking at three different sessions in exercise 17. All right, I will make use of imaginary numbers and basic operations. For example, in session A, yes, we are going to be making use of imaginary numbers and basic operation. In session B, we will make use of symbols. And finally, in session C, it's just coding. All right. All right, now let's look at the first part, which is the session A. In this session A, we are going to be seeing how the numbers on the left hand side, which is the end side, will give us the numbers on the right hand side. For example, how can 2 give you your 1? All right, okay, so that means 2 is related to 1. How can you use 16 to get 43? So 16 is related to 43. How can we use 17 to get 76? And uh, finally, how can we use 40 to get 115? Now let's go to the board. First, we are going to be looking at the first one. All right. In the first one, we, we are going to be making use of our basic operation symbols like plus, your times, your divide, and your minus, all right? So we are making use of minus and times in this particular one. And the imaginary numbers we are using is three and five. So we are going to make use of a times three and a minus five, times three and minus five. For the first one, which is two, so we multiply by three first, that is times 3 and then we get a 6 then we make use of the imaginary 5 here so that is 6 minus 5 and that gives us 1 all right so from 2 we are able to get 1 using our imaginary numbers and basic operation symbol now let's look at what we have here so it simply means 2 is giving us 1 so the same way we can look at the second one which is the 16 how can 16 give us the 43 now we are going back to the board to find out using the same procedure your 16 will be multiplied by 3 first or imaginary 3 and we get a 48 from that all right now the next thing is to do the imaginary minus 5 so that is 48 minus 5 all right so our answer will be 43 all right and now when we go back to the example again we are going to see exactly the same thing 43 so that is why 16 on the left side is giving us 43 we can do same for the third number from the left hand side all right we have another number which is 27 so when we multiply by imaginary 3 as we did before this time around we are going to get an 81 all right we are going to get 81 so you write one down and put an eight all right now the next thing is to do the imaginary minus five so 81 minus five so we are going to get 76 76 
when we go back to the example again we'll discover that the answer is actually 76 so that is why 27 is giving us 76 the last one here is 40 all right so we start with the 40 40 multiplied by um, 3 your imaginary 3 that gives us 120 120 then after that we do the imaginary minus 5 all right so we take 120 to this side and then try to subtract 5 from it so 120 minus 5 will give us 115 so when we go back to the example we will see that 40 is actually giving us 115 now let's go back go forward to the um, section B we have two symbols here that means a basic operation or it stands for a basic operation all right the first one is an inverted V while the second is a normal V now what does the inverted V stands for now let's find out first from that example when you check you will see that that symbol represents something and what it represents is what we call index index i then you have an n and you have a d and you have a e all right and then an x so index simply stands for par okay for example you have two raised to power two and so that means the par is called index all right now let's look at the second one of v a normal v this time around simply means division when you look at the values given it shows that it's actually a division symbol all right so we are going to use it as division so these are the two symbols we are making use of in this section now let's start with the first one all right let's see how the four inverted v and 2 will give us uh, 16. so how can it give us 16. now let's go back to the board now power or index simply means to put it as a small number at the top of the number so the first four is written as a base while the second is written as a power and when you say 4 raised to power 2 means 4 times 4 or multiply 4 in two places all right so that gives us 16 all right this is how we do it the first one is a base while the second one is the power for the division let's see how we got the 16 at the 12 rather 36 okay let's see how the 36 and the 3 gave us 12 since it's division all right we are going to have 36 divided by 3 36 divided by 3 now when you do this division you get 3 divided 3 1 and 3 divided 6 2 that is a 12 all right now for the second one 3 and 3 we also have the power so 3 to the power of 3 means to multiply 3 in 3 places so 3 times 3 times 3 that will no doubt give us 27 if done properly so it means 3 inverted v3 gives us our 27 all right so this is how the session 2 goes or session b 
Now let's look at session C, the last session on coding. Now when you'll be given a word and a set of numbers, these numbers represent a letter in the word, alright? So we try to match these letters. So first thing you do, you write the word and write the numbers in this order under each letter. So when you are asked to find a word from a given code, you can simply you know, match the letters with the numbers. So this is what we do. We are going to take one example, all right, just one example. Now, for example, if we are given a code 86567, 86567, what is the word this code represents? So you go back to this arrangement and try to match, you know, the letters with the numbers. Now, let's do that. We are going to start with the first number which is 8 8 matches with an M so the first number is the first letter is M 6 match with O so the second letter is O 5 matches with a T that means the second letter is the third letter is T all right and so we go back to the O again and finally the R so 7 matches with R you can see it so for the first one we have an M, that's your 8, the second one is your O, that is your 6, the third one is your T, that's 5, the fourth one is your O again, that is your 6, and lastly R for 7. So motto, motto, alright, therefore we can conclude by saying the code 86567 represents M for 8, O for 6, T for 5, O for 6 again, and R for 7. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next class. Bye.